I'm just checking the, the distance for the cables to figure out where the controller is going to get mounted and where the motor is going to get mounted and just kind of holding everything up. And the next thing we're going to have to do is put the bracket on this motor so we can compare it to the other motor I have. And it's identical. So what we're going to do is we're just going to copy the, bra the bracket mounting uh, that we did on this one with this one and use the same spacers on it. So the original build had a 100 millimeter uh, bracket. On my old wheelbarrow, you can see here, it comes with an extra uh, mounting uh, bushing here, and then it allows you to space the plate out on up to 100 millimeters. So Sean ordered the regular 68 to 73 millimeter kit, uh, which doesn't have that. So instead what we're going to do is we're just going to mount it with the front plate, which is all we really need anyway. And then what I did on his that's different than mine is on mine I basically used metal wedge or wooden wedges to get the angle right and then I used washers. So I've got three washers on this side and then three washers on the other side to get the angle so it lines up with the wheel because the metal handle is, at, uh, is not perpendicular to the wheelbarrow. So what we're going to do on uh, this one is I've just eyeballed it and it looks like about four washers, and so we're going to put four washers on the front, which is going to space it out, which is going to make the, ang the plate mount at a strange angle. And then when we line it up on the wheelbarrow, you'll also notice that it hits against the wheelbarrow, too, which is really nice, because what you want is you want something to stop that counter-rotating force when the wheelbarrow's uh, pulling. So we're going to put two, we're going to drill two bolts through here, and uh, you can see the amount of spacing we've got. We need spacing for the gear and for the chain tensioner. So right about here is right. We're going to put in two bolts, and we're going to bolt this plate right to the thing, and then we're going to start working on the, the front wheel. So. so we're going to take the wheel off, and we're going to line up the wheel that we can pull the axle. And we're going to line up this wheel with the, uh, with the chain ring that we're going to use. Oops, which is right there. So let's grab that chain ring. And what we want to do is we want to line it up so that uh, basically the offsets towards the, ins uh, the far side of the wheelbarrow so we have the, the, um, the least offset we can. So to mark the holes, what I do is I line it up visually so it's just perfect right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to mark each of the five points in here and then we're going to take a nail and a hammer and we're going to dent it in. And then what you want to do is you want to go through a process of drilling a number of different holes uh, sequentially in larger size. So you start with about an eight, eighth inch hole to make sure it lines up with the, with the dent and then you go bigger and bigger. And we don't want the holes initially to be any bigger than the holes we drilled into the chain ring which is just wide enough for the bolt. Right, And then what we're going to do is on the inside of the wheel, on this side of the wheel, we're going we're gonna to drill the holes even bigger because what we want is we want the shank that goes around the outside of the bolt to go all the way through the wheel and go to the other side. Otherwise, if we just have the, yeah, you can see here, they go all the way through the wheel to the other side and you can tack weld around here if you want to add additional stability. I didn't on this one. But you can't have the shim on one side and then have the bolt because then when you tighten the bolt, the wheel just crushes together. And then your, your uh, chain ring will get all wobbly. So we don't want to do that. And you can also see on here, I, I did do that initially with my first build and it ended up getting wonky. So what I did was I just used washers to space it out so that the chain ring, when you spin it, it doesn't wobble in and out. So we want to we want to we want it to be as straight as possible when we spin the wheel. We want this to be as straight as possible. We want it to be as strong as possible. And the best way to do that is to have the shank go all the way through to the back side of the wheel. So so doing the initial holes on this side, you're going to do all five holes the same size as the holes you already got. And then when you're doing the holes all the way to the back side, you can take the drill with the big bit, you don't have to go progressively larger, and you just want to right angle it right through the steel to the back side, and just make sure that it's straight up and down when you go through, because that, that's really critical. Um, and then what we'll do is once we get everything set up, we'll go back through and we'll re-drill the holes on this side so that they're just a little bit bigger, so they can fit the shim all the way through to the back side. Uh, but that's kind of a tricky part that we're gonna, we're gonna hold off on for now, so. All right. So each of the points 
that were in the very center of that other element uh, have been marked and then went through and punched just a tiny bit to make a depression. And I'm going to put a little bit of lubricant on there and go first with a small bit. slow and steady. So I'll go around and do that for all of these. So now I go through with a full size bit now that the pilot hole has been made. do that for all five. So the original side that I drilled out, or the direction I drilled this the wheel out in the first place, what I need to do now is drill just on this side, so the, fir the first side, down enough to allow this pipe to go through this side, but not through the other side. And the reason for this pipe will make more sense in a moment. There'll be bolts that go through this, but for now, we have a bit that just barely accommodates this pipe, and so I will lubricate that and go through each of these and extend the or expand the hole just a little bit. Not the most elegant execution. But, so it needs just to be able to barely go through, so I'm going to scour the edges just a little. A flat file or a round file would help with this too if needed. Oh, so you're not really drilling through more, you're drilling sort of around the edge to make it expand a little. Yeah, just so it can barely fit through there. And that's Pretty close. Let me just go a little bit further. And we're going for a very snug fit. So that should do it. That almost is a little uh -uh. loose. But you can see it's going through the inside, the first side, but not through the second. So I'm going to do that for each of these. All right, so we're gonna do a dry run here. We hooked everything up uh, with the controller and the battery that we're gonna use and the throttle. And we turned it on and sure enough, it turns on at 82 volts. And that seems to run just fine. So you wanna test it before, make sure all your connections are good. And all these connectors that, that basically aren't throttle or hull connectors or whatever, we're just gonna tie these up into a plastic bag and uh, cover it and keep them so that they don't get wet. So we're good, so we can keep going here. All right, so the Cyclone isn't really a, a starter kit for people that haven't done this sort of stuff before. Um, it's really kind of more advanced, and like a good example is the, uh, is the tensioning wheel needs to get mounted, and there's really no place proper to mount it the way that we're using it. So we have to drill a hole, we marked a hole, and we want it to be far enough away from the body that this, uh, this nut can connect to it. And there's three different spacers in the kit, and the, uh, and the chain wheel lines up just perfectly with this spacer. So we can tell by putting the spacer down, you see you want those wheels to just basically line up perfectly. And then what we're going to do is we're going to zip tie this spring on eventually, but for now, it's just a question of putting this on, and we want to mount the tensioner on here before we mount this on the wheelbarrow, because once it's on there, we're not going to be able to get it on. So, that's it. So, what we have to do now is we have to position the motor, and what you want to do is position it about, um, let's see what that is, uh, about two inches from this bolt here forward. Um, and then what, what I do is um, I mark with marker, 
where it needs to go. And then what we're going to do is we're going to drill two holes through here. And then we're going to hold this up and drill those holes all the way through the metal to the other side. So you drill the holes first here, and then you hold this up, line it up, and then push the drill through all the way through the metal. And we're also going to drill two holes here that I've already marked. This is for the controller. And then we're going to use self-tapping screws to put the controller right there. So we're going to drill all four of those holes right now. We're going to line up the front wheel with the motor and figure out what lengths of studs we need to cut so that it'll line up properly. And what we do to do that is we line up the front wheel uh, kind of right sort of in the middle. Um, and then we've got a little bit of adjustment either way in case we don't get it quite right. So you want to just mount the wheel right in the middle. And then if, if the alignment, we really want it to line up perfectly with the, with the, uh, with the wheel. And the motor's been mounted on by drilling through down here. Just bolts went through drilled through the plate, mounted onto the motor, and you've also added on the throttle. Yep, I just put a bolt through the handle and then tighten it up and put a washer on the side with the thing. And the thing you want to be careful of is you want to make sure that the throttle gets pushed down but doesn't get stuck. So it's got to fly, otherwise it could be, it could turn on and take off on you and you don't want that. And then zip tie it along to yep. keep the wires. So bolts into the controller. Then the controllers can, can go wherever so long as it's out of so the cables, the long enough, cables long will reach and it's out of the way. Okay, so uh, if you, this is the most, come around this way, and you'll see. So this is one of the most important parts of the process, and this is where you have to, you've got everything in, it's sort of lined up, and you need to measure the distance of the, the studs. So what I have is my calipers here are going all the way through to the back side of the wheel, and then I'm going to slide it over and just eyeball it. Oh, come on. And what you're looking for is the distance. So this is a little bit harder because it's an offset uh, wheel. So we're looking at the distance so that the wheel lines up. Just basically line it up so the wheel lines up perfectly with the other wheel. Okay. And then you're going to have a number. So this is 4.207 inches. And then you need to subtract it from the thickness. 3.20. 3.207. And then we're going to subtract it from the thickness of the metal. So I'm going to write that down. So yeah. All right, so now I've marked the pipes for the standoffs. And I'm just going to use a pipe cutter to, to cut through the pipe. And what I want to do is I want to make five of these that are the same length. So. And then we're going to put these around the bolts. It's going to be used as a standoff for the... And if you're cutting steel, it's going to take a while. So just take your time and, um, and do it. That's it. Screw something up? Again. No, I just I don't understand why they're not. They're not even going to the other. So here you have a bundle of wires and crap that have to get dealt with somehow. So what I do is I just put everything in a plastic bag, and then I'm going to tape the plastic bag up, and that'll keep the weather and the rain and the problems out, uh, and it'll keep the water from seeping into these connectors. So and then I just kind of zip tie everything shut once it's all together and then any extra cable like this charging cable can all just go inside the Ziploc bag. And you recommend though whenever this isn't in use to not leave it out in the elements. But I wouldn't leave it outside no I mean it's not, I don't think that's particularly smart but I mean you pay $500 for a wheelbarrow right and uh, you want to take care of it if you want it, if you want it to last you got to keep it out of the, the wire.
So this is, uh, we're putting on the tensioning wheel and I'm just gonna zip tie it and then make it nice and tight. And what we want is we want, we don't want this slack in the chain. We want it to be nice and tight. 